You ever heard that the hardest part about making games is finishing them? Well, now I can officially confirm that. If you are new here, I'm making a cozy traffic simulation game with my own game engine. The game is called Costa Verde Transport Department, and I've just released the free demo of the game, which is available right now on Steam, so you can go and check it out. The full release of the game is planned on October 26. I'm actually extremely happy that I managed to finish the demo right in time for the Steam Next Fest. Let me tell you how it all went. We ended the last devlog episode with me sending the game to my friends for some playtesting. And while I was waiting for the feedback, I decided to start working on some marketing for the game. You know, posting about it on social media and improving the look of various marketing materials, like the Steam capsules. Previously, I tried to make some logos by hand, and since I'm not a professional designer, the results were mediocre, if I put it nicely. So this time I had a different idea. Remember that vector graphics library I made to render the UI? Well, I can use it to generate some nice logos too. So I tried to do exactly that, taking some hexagonal background and adding the game's name on top using a handcrafted hexagon-based font. I think the result looks much better than what I had before, but this new logo doesn't communicate anything about the game apart from the fact that it uses hexagons. At this point I decided that I probably need to hire a professional to do these things. But, you know, communicating and negotiating with people takes a lot of energy as well, especially for an introvert like me. And since I was already extremely tired from all this marketing work, I decided to postpone hiring a designer until some better time in the future. By this time most of my friends have finished playtesting and provided me with some feedback. The game was generally ok, but there were some major issues that needed to be addressed. The fact that some of the resources like demolition and choppers are essentially single use didn't make much sense. It punished the player too much and made redesigning your road network almost impossible. The traffic lights didn't really help the traffic in any way and only slowed it down. Accepting rewards became boring and tedious over time, especially in the late game when you have dozens of new districts built each day. Because new districts only spawn in the morning, the game itself felt like it is turn-based. You build roads, skip to the next morning, build roads again and so on. Honestly, all these problems don't really sound like something impossible to solve. However, I don't have that much experience in game design, and thinking about game design requires a lot of my energy, which, if you remember, was already depleted after all the marketing work. It is no wonder that this was exactly the time when I experienced my first burnout. I actually physically felt that I simply cannot work on the game anymore. I tried to trick myself into it by working on the game in other areas, like graphics, which I always enjoy working on. I managed to pull myself together and implement a simple depth of field effect, which makes the game look a bit like a miniature when you zoom close enough. I also implemented something like a motion blur effect when you are fast forward in time. It doesn't use the motion vectors, but instead simply averages the last few frames. So technically it's not a motion blur, but I don't care, it still looks good enough. However, working on graphics didn't seem to help with my burnout, and trying to push myself into working on the game probably made it even worse. And for the next month or so, I just didn't open the project at all. I still wanted to finish the game though, and I couldn't stop thinking about what exactly caused my burnout. Should I maybe postpone the release by several months? Or if I don't, how long can I afford to rest before returning to the project? I talked about my issues with friends and random people on the internet, which honestly didn't help much because everybody has their own opinions on these things, and nobody has the full perspective on my project and feelings that I have. Eventually though, I slowly started to feel recharged and more energetic, and I made my decision to continue working on the project and release it in October, as I've initially planned. I started by addressing some of the issues that came up during playtesting. I completely removed the demolition resource, meaning you no longer need a special resource to build a road through existing buildings. I also made the forest chopper resource recoverable, so that you can remove the road through a forest and place it in a different forest style instead. I couldn't make the demolition resource recoverable as well, because districts can spawn on existing roads, which will make it possible to farm loads of this resource in advance, making it essentially useless anyway. I wanted to make the one-way roads feel better and more important than usual roads, so I renamed them to highways and made the cars twice as fast when moving on them, which makes roundabouts even more powerful in the game. Feeling that I've spent enough time working on the gameplay for now, I decided to allow myself a little treat and work on the game's visuals for some more. First, I made the moon shape a little more interesting, and made the trees wiggle a little bit due to the wind. Then I worked on some particle effects. 
I made dust particles which spawn when the player builds or removes roads, or when new buildings are constructed. I also reused the same particle system for smoke generated by some buildings, which I think made the factory districts look much more alive. Then I had a sudden idea to place some lanterns by the roads, making the city look even more like a real one. They have some predetermined spawning places depending on the type of a road. I also reused the same lantern spawning algorithm to add fences between the farms and the roads. I still had a feeling that something is missing from the overall look of the city, and after thinking about it for a while, I realized that my lanterns don't emit light. So I turned them into actual light sources, and the nighttime look of the city changed completely. Honestly, this is probably the most important thing I ever added to this game in terms of graphics. I just absolutely love how it looks. Now, I've wanted to add bridges to the game for quite a long time, but right now they would be pretty much useless. So I hacked together a really simple river generation algorithm first. It essentially tries to follow the terrain slope, making random turns from time to time to make the river look more natural. I also had to tweak the water rendering a little bit, so that the surface waves would show the direction of river flow. Then I started working on the actual bridges. I made a bridge model and implemented some code that would rotate and stretch the bridge patches according to the height difference between the bridge endpoints. It took me some time to figure out how to connect the bridges with the land roads. I ended up adding this um, kind of basement support meshes, I guess. I don't really know what they are called in real life. These meshes are rendered as terrain, meaning they receive decal projections, which is how roads are rendered in this game. The bridges are considered to be valid roads by the cars, but they still don't quite know how to properly use them, so that's what I worked on next. While working on the bridges, I introduced a funny bug in my materials shader, which caused the windmills look extremely reflective, as if they were made of metal. I also made the bridges cost a special bridge resource, added some lights to them and a nice concrete block texture. And I also had to fix a bug where dust particles would spawn when constructing the bridge. Well, I guess it's not really a bug, but it looked weird, so I fixed that. I wanted to make the city look even more lively, so I added some simple farmhouse models in addition to the already existing windmill and granary buildings. I even made one of these farmhouses produce some cozy smoke from the chimney. And after being so productive for about a week, you guessed it, I got another burnout. Although this one seemed to be smaller and after about a week I felt like working on the game again. I decided to add some foam animation near the coastlines, something a lot of people requested me to do. This is basically just a single texture I made in Blender, which gets distorted and applied in a special way in the shader. Then I added a camera zooming animation when you start the game. Just a nice little touch to make things feel more dynamic to the player. Now, at this point I realized that I was wrong about my last burnout. It was not actually a smaller one, and I needed a much longer break, which this time took yet another couple of weeks. And after I rested enough, I found myself in a difficult situation. The Steam Next Fest is starting soon, and I only have three weeks to finish the game's demo. Suddenly, my brain entered a special project finishing mode, which I've learned from participating in over a dozen game jams. I removed half of the things I wanted to add to the game, carefully prioritized the remaining stuff and started working again. The core gameplay issues were still mostly unsolved. I've also realized that I completely forgot about one central idea I had about this game. I wanted the player to actually shape the city and not just build the roads where they're told to build them. This was a very important thing to realize, because it led me to a completely new core gameplay idea. What if I remove the task system completely and make the districts simply spawn around the roads the player builds? I thought about this for a while, and it seemed to solve all of my gameplay problems, so I immediately started implementing and testing it. The districts wanting to spawn are now shown in the top left corner, together with the countdown indicating when new districts will be added. I made each new spawn district reward the player with a bit of the regular road resource, because it is the most important resource in the game, but there was still a question of how does the player obtain all the other resources. I solved this by adding random bonus tiles scattered throughout the map. Whenever a district gets built on such a bonus tile, the player gets the corresponding resource. 
Since the districts only spawn around player-built roads, the player can nudge the growth of the city towards the resources they need and carefully plan the expansion of the city with respect to the location of the resources. However, if there are some problems on the roads, like a traffic jam, new districts won't spawn until the player fixes the problems. I felt like this new core mechanic was much better than the previous one, and I'm genuinely happy that I managed to come up with all this. It was also about the time to make some new logos for the game. I've actually hired an artist to do that this time, but they kind of stopped answering my messages at some point, and I didn't really have time to find a new artist, so I decided to make all the logos myself, again. Though this time I ended up with something I'm actually happy with. It is relatively nice and simple and communicates well the major aspects of the game. Then I switched to adding some new content. Previously I had some logic that would prevent certain districts from generating next to each other, like factories next to farms, but this mechanic only complicated things, so I removed it entirely. The only thing that affects district spawning now is the terrain type, whether it is sand, grass or snow. For example, farms only spawn on grass, residential districts only spawn on grass and sand, and so on. There are 7 total possibilities for this district to terrain mapping, and I already have 4 of these possibilities covered by existing district types. I thought it would be fun to have all 7, so I added 3 more district types to the game. A beach, a park, and a mine. The parks and mines feature some of the most sophisticated animated models I've made for this game. I had one last problem with the old gameplay, the traffic lights. I failed to figure out how to use them to actually improve the traffic, so I was planning to simply remove them from the game completely, but I suddenly got another idea. Let's rename them from traffic lights to Magic Lights. And if such a light is placed on a road tile, the cars simply ignore all collisions on this tile as if they're traveling there alone. I changed all the text related to traffic lights, changed the icon, added some nice magic particles and voila! Game design at its finest, if you ask me. Now I had a lot of other stuff to finish before the demo can be released, and the next most important thing was a tutorial. I made it kind of non-invasive, in the form of helpful text pop-ups or arrows showing where to click and what different things do. I always love it when a tutorial just happens naturally while you are playing the game, instead of being a separate scenario with its own objectives and too much text. Then I realized I still don't have the game over indicated to the player in any way, so I made this widget which shows you the time you have to resolve all the road problems, and if you fail to do that, you lose. Then I started working on the various menus. I made the menu buttons appear and disappear in a satisfying way, and implemented the basic stuff like starting a new game, quitting the game and so on. I also made a settings menu, which is going to be very important during the next fest, because the game is relatively heavy in terms of graphics and I wanted the player to have the option to disable all that heavy stuff and still enjoy the game. I wanted to put a static image in the menu background, but then I realized I can easily reuse the map rendering code here. So instead of having a static image, I've put a small island on the background, rendered exactly how it would look in the actual game. This has a cool side effect in that you can see the graphics changes applied in real time. I don't think many 3D games have this feature. I've also added a credits page, which lists all the people who contributed in one way or another to the game. The next thing in my to-do list was localization. There isn't much text in the game, so in theory localization was relatively easy to implement. I just moved all the text to JSON files containing localized versions of all strings, and then I can load all of these JSON files and enable the player to change the language. One problem with localization was that the Hermit font which I'm using didn't support Cyrillic letters, so I had to use a different font, namely Noto Sun, to generate an SDF texture for the Cyrillic letters. Then I merged the two resulting fonts together using a Python script. Around this time I made a final playtesting round among my friends, and I realized that the tutorial doesn't explain how to build complex roads, or how to use them to resolve traffic problems. I couldn't come up with a simple way of explaining this as part of the existing tutorial, so instead I decided to show random tooltip images at the start of each game. Spoiler alert, it didn't really work that well, and I still need to figure out a better way to do this. You know, I have this really bad habit of postponing all the audio work until the very end of the project. 
and by this time the game literally had no music or sound effects. It was about the time to change that. I started with the music created by Josh Kersden specifically for this game, and which you've been listening to during this whole episode. I'll put a link to his page in the video description. There is one music theme for the main menu, and two more for the actual game. I implemented some code to switch between them and to randomly select the track to play during the actual game. I also randomly disable the music temporarily, to give the player some silence and peace. Then I worked on various sound effects. Some of them are procedurally generated, and others are attribution-free sounds I downloaded from various sites like freesound.org. I added a bunch of UI sounds, environment sounds, and car sounds. The latter even have a subtle Doppler effect applied to them, which should hopefully increase the player's immersion. And of course I added a separate settings menu, where you can tweak the volume of each sound channel separately. And the demo is ready. Honestly, it feels a bit unreal to even say that. I've also made a small trailer for the game, which I've uploaded earlier to this channel. As I've said, the demo is freely available on the game's Steam page, so seriously, go and try it. And as usual, wishlist the game if you think you'd play it, and like this devlog and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more devlogs. The release is in just a week, and I'll definitely make another post-release devlog before switching to the next project. And that's it for today. I'll see you again after the release.